This is the number I told you about for Pell, Pell eligible students. And it's important to sort of keep that in mind for a moment because those are students who are, who are in the definition most need. If you go to the next one here, if I can do this, I think I can do this. This shows you what the state has done in federal in assistance for students directly. And I'll commend you to go to a, a report called the Lincoln Project Report. Okay, and the Lincoln Project Report, it will tell you that for, for fi student financial aid, California, in addition to having high operational support for flagship universities, provides almost $10,000 per student in financial aid. Michigan provides $500 on average per student for financial aid. In addition to being 47th out of 48 in operational support. Makes no sense. Whatever you do, it makes no sense. And then you look at this issue, and this is my, I don't know, Tom, you can say your data. So Michigan State is a very high tuition place. We have all of those Pell students. We're um, a very middle class place because 75% of our students come from families of $135,000 or less. And this is our debt profile. So uh, only 43% of our students leave with educational debt. And the debt is about $26,000. For the state, it's 63 with 30,000. And for nationally, it's 68 with $30,000. It is possible to manage student debt. And this isn't from endowment because our endowments are low compared to our peers. This is from reallocating money for, for student financial aid because it's important. In a profile of students who are very poor, who are by, by and large, um, by and large are less able to, um, let me show you the profile. This is our family distribution. So it's possible to do without free. But our kids, some of them are paying 7% loans. On the, and there's no way to get ahead in an inflationary world of, of increases in, 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 point, in salary with 7% paid on your student debt for interest. But that's not workable. Most of this debt, because I know this from the Federal Reserve piece, most of this debt here is the national debt is proprietary schools. Uh, and, how do you, and a, a large portion of federal financial aid goes to proprietary schools. There are ways of fixing this, is all I'm telling you without rhetoric that takes you, in my view, into a direction that is not sustainable either. So I'm a, so I'm a, 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 that puts me a conservative, liberal, liberally conservative, I don't know. Tom? Well, there's a set of metrics. One of ours is the one that was reported in the Wall Street Journal, which is would you do it all over again, which is over 90%. Uh, one of them is uh, sort of the plus minus for us on graduation rates. So there's a U.S. News and World Report me metric that says this is what you were, your predicted graduation rate would be given your student bodies. It's a way of equalizing all of us. I don't know that I agree with the formula, but it's a way of knowing whether you are good or bad or indifferent. And we're graduating students at one of the highest levels in the AU above our predicted numbers. So would you do it all over again? 90% of our students say they would. Look at Wall Street Journal polls. Our students say they're engaged, which is an important metric in that at the level of small liberal arts colleges, your numbers would be as good as ours in that regard. Uh, whether or not people have jobs or go to graduate school, that's 90%. And if you look at the underlying metrics of all of this, about study abroad, internships, 
all, the, all those kinds of things. You know, on the experience side, that you, are the value-added experiences, are more and more of our students having value-added experiences? Because degrees are one thing, but are they having value-added experiences within the degree? Those are all of our metrics. They're similar to yours. And then we look at the debt thing. Because if I can't move the debt, if I can't move the debt numbers continue down, that number was 56% when I started as president, leading with educational debt. Now it's 43. So that's, that's my other success measure. But you have them as well. Grand Valley does well on theirs. We all, we all look at each other. But within the AAU set, which is the one I worry about the most uh, in terms of our reputation and, and peers, you know, um, you know, those numbers are pretty impressive with staying in state as much as we are. Because Michigan is not a good state for educational academic performance at the high school level compared to other states. And we just got to fix that. You guys are working at fixing that. You're the K-12 guru now uh, with your commission. But you know the work that you all have done in the community with uh, talent 20, 2020, 2025, are all important things in order to move the metrics forward. But I've got metrics for everything. Our research numbers are up. We're 600 million. FRIB doesn't count yet. So I've got a whole bunch of those, too. I'm so metric-driven, it's I feel like I'd be an accountant. No offense to accountants. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So you have a beautiful new building, almost downtown. Uh-huh. Could you talk a little bit about what's going to go on in there, how it connects to the classroom, and sure. how it to the Sure. Well, one of the things we wanted to do was to partner and complement the work of Van Andel uh, in terms of research, because research is an engine of economic development if you read all of the national studies. And to uh, bring that aspect of it to, again, complement Grand Valley as well in the work that they're doing in research. But you know, we're a, a top, the AU is a top 62 public and private research universities in North America, so it's a little bit more of our stick than than Grand Valleys. And so the idea was to do something that was complementary. And we began with, with research thrust that included Parkinson's, neurodegenerative diseases, those kinds of things, that, and brought in uh, Jack Lipton. And, and Peter can give you a long story about Jack and his team. And they are housed in Van Andel. Uh, Van Andel is growing, which is terrific. Its research profile is. It, is growing. They've got big plans for filling their building. And we had big plans for adding 15 PIs that's, that if you take all of their people, is about 400 folks. So think about a high-tech company of 400 people that you would want for your economic development for the community. And that's the building. And so the positions are available. There's a research plan that's being developed. Uh, Norm can give you the longer version of that when he gets his feet on the ground after one month. Uh, Walt Esselman has been working very closely with Spectrum, St. Mary's, Van Andel, as everybody aligns their research plans for what will be here in the building. Um, and the, the overall view is called precision medicine. Uh, which will require a big data element to that. And I think there will be some announcements about joint positions and, and uh, positioning with both Van Andel and Spectrum. They'll come down the road here. Uh, and then back in, back in East Lansing, we just opened the new bioengineering building. This guy I just talked about earlier wants to work here and with you because distance doesn't really matter much to these scientists. It matters to a community, but it doesn't matter to the scientists. We just did a new department of big data algorithms that are the, the next stage of big data. Uh, and those folks are, we're going to put some of them on the fifth floor of the new research building here. They'll work by computer. They'll actually work in the cloud. 
and once they get in the cloud, it doesn't matter where they are physically, and they'll be able to work back and forth, work back and forth with Van Andel. Uh, so I'm really excited about you know, where we can go next because we have these assets that are sort of invisible to the community. Large animal models working at the University of Michigan on some of their work in stem cell because apparently pigs make a difference in some of the work that they're doing. So we're doing that because we have the vet college, we're doing that stuff. We happen to have gene sequence, sequencing techniques and gene splitting techniques we've been using with plants and animals that have some value in humans. So we're all pooling our resources there uh, through the work we're doing uh, with the University of Michigan. So I think there's a lot of, of potential here. And what I feel really good about is the leadership we're gonna have. Peter Jones at Van Andel is just absolutely superb, extraordinary. But he under, he's not only a great science director for Van Andel, he's a great collaborator. Walt Esselman, who we've put over here uh, to be, be, better to look at the research programs before Norm was hired, is a great collaborator. He, he knows what Spectrum wants. He's met with Spectrum researchers, St. Mary's researchers, Van Andel researchers, so we got a plan. And this new institute will be the, some of the fundamental research, the fundamental research that's needed to make this successful. And it'll all come together. And we've had a little bit of a, a pause as everybody reassesses their strategic plans. And we've not made as much progress as I might have liked as I look back on all of this. But we're really poised because of all of the, the positions yet to be hired. And they can be done in consort with one another. And so I think it's really exciting. I mean, and, and then that's innovation. Hopefully it will spawn companies and other intellectual property, but I worry probably less about that than you would want me to uh, because, because some of this is very fundamental and people will figure out what to do about it. And I also think that Norm ran, uh, what I didn't say about outside of spending all that time at Johns Hopkins, he was the director of, uh, head of radiology at Wash University of Washington, used to working with multiple hospitals as well as the, the UW uh, hospital, ran the clinical practice there. So he's somebody who's a researcher who also does, understands clinical practice. And so that's gonna be a real value added as we move forward. And he gets embedded in the community and learns all the players. So I'm really excited. I think this is going to be pretty extraordinary. I think a year from now, a year from now we'll have part of those folks hired when we open the building because they're like airplanes waiting to land. I mean, they, they can't land without space. So they got, we got airplanes in the air, people are being recruited, and the building will probably be target half full when we open the building next fall. Uh, springs ball whenever it gets ready. And then uh, in East Lansing, we've got all these positions for CONTOG. These are gonna come together in recruitment so that they align. Van Andel has their plans, we're talking together. Those are all gonna come together in a pretty, pretty spectacular way. Uh, so I think five years from now, you're gonna look at this moment in time with what, what Tom will do with the development of engineering and bioengineering in Grand Valley and the health sciences. And I think you're gonna see this moment as a huge inflection point uh, for the community. And it, so it's gonna take a little bit of believing. This is the believing stage. And the building helps to do the believing. But the thing about the way we work is that we're embedded with the hospital so that those priorities are gonna be our priorities, not MSU priorities. And this team in Grand Rapids is gonna have team Grand Rapids, team, M team West Michigan priorities, not just MSU priorities matched, mapped on Grand Rapids. And that's the difference in how we work. That's the difference in how we work. And I think we got the right people in the right spot to have those conversations and we're just ready and the resources are all there to go. 
So this is not a hope and then get resources. This is a resource, find the right leadership and go. Okay. Yeah, again, again you are very you're very blessed to have great community support, great leadership, Grand Valley, and we're just pleased to be with Van Andel, St. Mary's, and Spectrum as our partners. We're just really pleased to be a part of, a small part of this community and its future. So thanks very much. As you know, one of the most challenging things in, in health is clean water. Right. And I personally, many of you know, have uh, traveled to Honduras every February, and I've put in hundreds of biosand filters that change the lives of people living in small huts and houses. And when you see moms that have tears in their eyes because their kids have not been sick for the last year since this mm -hmm. filter has been put in, it's incredible. So in recognition of you coming to take your time to uh, give us your wisdom and knowledge and information, we are donating a bio sand filter to a family in a third world country in your name. Thank you very much. Thank take you. Care.